Operating Officer of the Canadian Building Trades Unions. Well, what's he talking about? Joining us now is Russ Hebert, Member of Parliament from White Rock. Russ, you're in Ottawa today. What is the boss of the uh, Construction Trades, Building Trades Union, talking about when he says there's a PSYOPs war? He's talking about your bill, isn't he? I suspect he is, but he really has nothing to be concerned about as long as labor organizations in Canada have nothing to hide because my bill simply provides disclosure for information that Canadians really want to have. They're, especially during this day and age, and in the last few weeks in particular, Canadians have an expectation that transparency and accountability is something that we readily provide. Uh, MPs, MLAs, Crown Corporations, other institutions already disclose this information. Charities have for 36 years. I don't see why he's opposed to labor organizations already also providing this information. So the bill's called Bill C-377. I think <clears throat> we've talked about this before in the show. Basically, it would disclose how unions, you know, their budgets, what they spend on political matters to their own members. Is that right? What, what else would this bill do, Russ? Well, it doesn't, the intent is not to disclose it to their members. Their, their intent is to disclose it to the public. The public forgoes around $500 million a year to the Canadian Treasury as a result of the tax deductions available to Canadian labor organizations. And as a result of those tax deductions, I believe there's a corresponding responsibility for them to disclose. We do something similar with charities. They receive very generous tax credits, and Canadians rightfully donate to these institutions. But they also know that they can look up a charity and find out how much is being spent on administration or salaries. And that actually increases the confidence that Canadians have and thus increases their donations. And I believe that if similar information was provided about labor organizations, that Canadians would also be able to uh, evaluate the integrity and the health of these institutions as well and potentially increase their confidence that uh, the money, the four to five billion dollars a year that's collected is being well spent. Uh, what other elements are there in Bill C-377? Well, it really is as they're all about disclosure of financial information. So. The core areas of a union's activities would be disclosed in aggregate, that is one big number, but if a union gets involved in political activities or lobbying or something outside of its core area of responsibility, then more detailed information would have to be provided to the CRA, and then the CRA would put that information on a website. Now, where is this bill? This is a private member's bill, but uh, if I recall from our last discussion, this bill has the blessing of the government. Where is it uh, in the course of becoming a law? It passed in the House of Commons last December 12th, and it's now before the Senate. It passed second reading in the Senate about two weeks ago on a vote of 55 to 35, which is uh, kind of a, a rough estimation as to how it might uh, come out, but no predictions uh, with that vote. We've had two days of testimony. I gave uh, the first hour of testimony yesterday, and it proceeded with three hours of debate today, or testimony. And we'll see several weeks of this go on before we uh, possibly see a report back to the full Senate and possibly a vote by the full Senate before the summer break. Now, I think I know Bob Blakely. I mean, if, of all the labor unions out there, a private sector union that works in construction is, uh, you know, to me that's morally superior than a government union that works for a government monopoly and basically hoses the taxpayers both ways. So I'm more sympathetic to Bob Blakely uh, uh, than I am to the Public Service Alliance of Canada or the Postal Workers Union. What, what would he, I mean, he's talking about a psychological war and a media war, uh, but what does he think, uh, has he expressed to you directly what his concerns are? Obviously, he wants to be private. Obviously, he doesn't want what accounting expenses might come with this. But has he said to you there's something about this is a, that is a moral offense? or a, uh, what, Why does he call this a war? That's a great question. I have not heard directly from Mr. Blakely on these issues, but... I do know, thanks to the Nanos polling just a few years ago, that 83% of Canadians support this kind of transparency for labor organizations, and 86% of unionized workers, so those are the people that Mr. Blakely represents, support this kind of transparency and accountability, and the numbers in Quebec are even higher. Huh. So Canadians across the country want transparency, which leads to accountability, and um, it's hard for labor organizations or others to stand in the way uh, for any good reason, because they know that, as Justice Brandeis once said, that the sunshine is the greatest uh, uh, cleanser uh, of, of all. You know, when you shine a light on, on some people's activities, then uh, it increases the confidence that they have that, that, that things are going well. Well, Russ, I'm glad you came on the show. I know we've talked about this before. I'm going to invite uh, uh, union boss Bob on the show again. I'm pretty sure we've spoken to him once before in the context 
of the oil sands. I want to hear from him because if all he's concerned about is public disclosure of where dues come and go, I, I think that he's uh, being too tight-fisted with the facts. And, I, and I, I'm going to get to the bottom of it because it, it seems to me more disclosure, uh, especially when there's a tax subsidy involved, is something that, well, as you point out in that Ipsos poll, about six out of seven uh, unionized Canadians want. So I think I'll ask him on the show to come and make his case. I, I, I wonder why he calls it a war. Russ, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Folks, stay with us. Is Thomas Mulcair, the NDP, right to call for the abolition of the Senate? We'll discuss next. When it comes to campaigns, elections, and everything in between, this team has you covered.